Welcome everybody to this video presentation of mine. Um, I want to look at uh, NATO today. And as we uh, look at NATO, how does NATO fit into Bible prophecy? Well, we look uh, here, they had a conference in Brussels on uh, March 24th of 2022 this year. And they have this group, uh, this uh, NATO G7 EU all meeting. And if we look at it, you know, we had the uh, have the G7 there, and then we have uh, the EU flag, NATO flag, and then we have a German flag for G7. They become the president, uh, the G7 president country for 2022. So, and this is the same G7 uh, Germany for G7 uh, flag. So, what's the point of this? Well, there seems to be this seven and ten set up here and uh you know in the bible it does talk about uh, in revelation about a, a beast having seven ten uh, seven heads and ten horns and uh coming up out of the sea so we're always on the alert for that and uh so i wanted to kind of look at nato here and if, if it fits into this and then at the end of june there they had a g7 meeting in bavaria germany on climate change and this group was there uh, a little bit different, no NATO representative, but here we had uh, two EU people and uh, then the G7 and then we also had Biden's dog. And so they had this, you know, idyllic situation talking about climate, beautiful scene. And, uh, you know, this is kind of the backdrop of all these conferences. You know, this is the perfect world we're going to create here. You know, if you just listen to us and do everything we say. But in looming in the background of this for these other two summits with, uh, you know, NATO in there. And NATO is, they're not into climate change, they're into war. So we got this kind of paradox. And and this is why this group, uh, as bucolic as they look, they really aren't. Now, at the end of June, the same year, 2022, they had a big group uh, meeting, NATO conference in Madrid. And there you get all the NATO uh, participants there. And it's a little different than the one in March where, where you just had a NATO representative. Here you have all the NATO people. And, and so uh, these represent the countries. But the power block uh, is connected with that uh, G7 EU group. So... But how does NATO here fit into Bible prophecy? Well, uh, let's see if, if the scriptures will give us the answer. You know, in uh, Zechariah 1, 18 to 20, it talks about four horns that have scattered. And here it says, Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, these are the four horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem, so that no one lifts up their heads. And, you know, people think, well, that happened in the past. This is Zechariah. It's a prophecy. It's not talking about past. It's talking about end time events. And so uh, these four horns, uh, interesting, NATO, it looks like four horns. You, know, you say northeast, southwest, but they look like horns. So, uh, and you know, NATO is the military might of Europe right now. And that's where the beast comes out of, the north. Now, NATO, uh, interesting, I was reading here, they were saying NATO must adopt, uh, transform their, its old mission into a new strategy in light of the russian ukrainian war. And, uh, and this is exactly true. They used to be defense, now they have to be on the offense. And, you know, they, they showed their might there in, uh, in Yugoslavia, where they defeated that leader, which Russia didn't like. But Russia had no say because, uh, you know, they were, NATO was allowed to go in there. But they can't get into the Ukraine because Ukraine isn't a NATO country. So that's why Russia attacked them. But, but here, something interesting, I noticed this, one of NATO's helicopters looks like a locust and there's a prophecy in Joel about locusts yeah Joel 1 4 it says what the gnawing locust has left 
the swarming locust is eaten. What the swarming locust is left, the creeping locust is eaten. What the creeping locust is left, the stripping locust is eaten. So here he's talking about what's going to happen to the land of Israel. And after this uh, army comes through, there's just nothing left. And uh, and see, we, we see four different locusts, a stripping, a creeping, a swarming, and a uh, gnawing locust. And so four different kinds of locusts, but they're all speaking about the same thing, but uh, a, a nation coming up against Israel. Now this locust army suddenly has teeth like a lion. Joel 1.6 says, for a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. And so now it's become not only a locust, four different kinds of locusts, but a, a nation, and come up against the land of Israel. And so, you know, I don't have to remind you that in Revelation 13, 2, the the uh, beast that comes up from the sea has teeth like a lion and uh, and so they're talking about the same one and uh and this antichrist is beast having seven heads and ten horns and uh it says there and he was like a leopard and looked like a leopard and is uh had the feet of a bear the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and great authority so this is uh what we're looking at here it's this this new order that they're bringing in, this seven head, ten horn group that we're seeing right in front of us. Okay, in uh, Revelation 13, 1, it actually says, and, that's, and the dragon stood upon the sand of the sea. And uh, But here he says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And uh, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Well, I was just talking about this seven head, ten horn, you know. This is what we're seeing here, this G7 group, along with, uh, you know, these other Europe, EU, NATO, Germany, and they're all sticking together. There's kind of a 10-7 setup here, and I, I don't think it's a fluke. Here they are, you know, here we have the seven, and then we have, you know, the EU, NATO, and the German presidency. <laughs> so, uh, and there's the other German presidency flag at each end. So if you count them up, three, six, nine, and then three is actually, it's not 11 here, because these, the these are the same flag, so it's actually 10. So you get this seven, 10 group. And here, this was in uh, March, so these guys, they're not here to talk about climate change. They're here to talk about military uh, security and what they're going to do. And NATO is the, the army here they're going to use. You know, Germany's the head of the G7 for 2022, I said that. And here he makes his statement, we will use our G7 presidency to make this group a pioneer, a pioneer for a climate neutral economy and an equitable world. Remember the beast has seven heads, you know, and 10 horns, not just, so uh, right now, Germany fits this head. It's, it's one of the seven heads and it's running the show. So that's pretty interesting to me. You know, but NATO here is the key there. Uh, like I said, there, the military might, you know, of, uh, of uh, even the G7 and for Europe particularly. So Putin, he's not really worried about, um, you know, climate change or even uh, different individual countries like Ukraine, but NATO he is concerned about because he knows NATO has uh, nuclear weapons and a lot of might. And so for that reason, you know, he he went into Ukraine before Ukraine could become a NATO country. Because if NATO had, if uh, Ukraine had been a NATO country, then 
then uh, NATO could come and rescue Ukraine, but as it is, they can't. So this is what's going on right now. And so these two big powers are kind of jostling. And uh, I think that's pretty interesting. And I, I really don't think it's going to be Putin that's going to invade Israel. I think it's this group. If you look at Joel, and even you look, uh, here's another thing too. If you look at uh, Revelation 9 about that, the army of the beast, and uh, I think it is the fifth trumpet, that uh, they're locusts as well. And uh, this army, they're like locusts and horsemen. So this could be the group. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you will keep watching my videos. Also, uh, you know, if you're a Christian, that's great. If you're not, you know, today's the day of salvation. As many as received Christ, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. You know, Jesus was sent by God from heaven. He became man. He died on the cross. He lived the perfect life. Paid our debt. But, you know, it's like a gift. You still have to open it. You can't just leave it under the tree. So I hope you've done that. God bless and keep looking up.